So, when God made the light givers <coughs> to rule over the day and over the night, the appearance of the stars was magnified and in color by the Rakia firmament expanse. Dr. Bai's boss says the stars were shining at a distance, the startling characteristic of the pre flood world. In Genesis 1 14 to 18, the stellar heavens are described. The stars are in color, and the biblical record states that God set the stars in the firmament expanse. The ancients described the firmament expanse as a vault above the earth, and the stars were placed in this vault. Imagine being there. Pinkish sky, beautiful, magnified stars, as, as if they were. Uh, like a diamond against a black velvet cover in a uh, in the, in, the, in a vault. <clears throat> Ancient myths speak of stars in a vault-like sky, which appear much closer than they do now. This parallels the pre-flood pre-flood model with a crystalline water metallic hydrogen composite canopy, which would magnify the image of the stars, <clears throat> making them appear to be much closer and in color. The biblical record states very clearly that God set the stars in the firmament expanse much as the jeweler would enhance a diamond by placing it on a background of black velvet. Like I said, the word set is taken from the Hebrew word Nathan. It means to add and yield. In other words, the stars are not physically placed in the firmament expanse because they are great distances away. But as light from the stars penetrates the firmament expanse, the rakia, there is a very strong magnetic field in the middle. It is superconductive without any resistance to the flow of electrons. On each side is an electromagnetic field charged to a lesser degree in the crystalline water formation. Very, very cold, very high up, 180 miles up uh, formation uh, temperatures that uh, superfreeze the uh, hydrogen into metallic crystalline structure and the water above. What is then presented in a pressurized form on each side is a photomultiplier. Each photon of light which strikes the configuration is multiplied by 10 because of the interaction in the atoms. On the earth side of the canopy, the stars were seen with 10 times the photons that the light brought to the outer surface of the canopy. Before the flood, the stars were seen by man as being about three times brighter than they are seen today. In other words, in the firmament expanse, God set the stars or added and yielded their dimensions in full color. NASA has found that when a red filter is used in space, the stars appear in beautiful color. I guess you can go to the store and get something like this and see. This is exciting because God put the stellar bodies in space for signs, for days, for months, and for years. And of course, they would be magnified. We understand that by observing the rotation of the Earth, in relation to the movement of the sun and the moon and other heavenly bodies, we, we can tell times. But now we can perceive that with the en enhancement of the light, those pre before the flood could, by the configuration of the stars, tell time at any moment. They would not need a Rolex watch. They would have something far better. Isn't that interesting? That's why the earth is deteriorated. We're looking at a deteriorated earth because of sin in the world. But we're, God is saying, I'm going to create the new heavens and the earth the way it should have been before it deteriorated because of sin. Genesis 1, 20 to 23. Then God said, let the waters abound with an abundance of living creatures, nephesh, and let birds fly above the earth across the face of the firmament, the expanse of the heavens. So God created bara, out of nothing, created out of nothing, great sea creatures and every living thing, nephesh, living things, that moves with which the waters abounded according to their kind and every winged bird according to its kind and God saw that it was good. So we, what we have is created, bara, created out of nothing, past tense, in, indicating a completed act, not an evolutionary one. So in the Genesis account people try to turn that creating is creating. Some versions even have that. No, it's created, done deal not evolving. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters and the seas, and let birds multiply on the earth. <clears throat> so the evening and the morning were the first, fifth day. Evening and morning, 24-hour day. All that done, just by speaking, out of nothing. Living creatures are created. First sea, bird, sea and bird life on day five, and then land creatures on day five. Verses 24 and 25. So Henry Moore says, 
By the way, this is his book, The Genesis Record. Having made the atmosphere and hydrosphere, water-laden part of Earth, the Earth's surface and atmosphere, on the second day, <clears throat> and then the lithosphere, the outer surface of the Earth, and biosphere, the habitable, habitable part of the Earth, on the third day, God next proceeded to make animal life for the atmosphere and hydrosphere on the fifth day, and then animal life for the lithosphere and biosphere on the sixth day. All the necessities were living for living creatures were present on the earth by this time. Light, air, water, soil, chemical, plants, fruits, and so forth. One deficiency yet remained. The earth was still void of inhabitants. However, God had formed it to be inhabited. Isaiah 45:18, And the fifth and sixth days were to be devoted to this final work of creation. We don't see man yet. C.I. Schofield states in the NIV Oxford Study Bible, the theme, every living and moving thing, as distinguished from fishes, merely is taken up again in verse 24, living creatures, showing that in the second creative act, all animal life is included. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters and the seas, and let birds multiply on the earth. One, uh, verse 23, So the evening and the morning were the fifth day. Now, let's take a look at this, Isaiah 45, 18. For thus says the Lord, who created the heavens, who is God who formed the earth and made it? Who has established it? Who did not create it in vain? So it wasn't created in vain first, went to, went to, to pot, and then God had to recreate it? There's nothing here about that. Who formed it to be inhabited? I am the Lord and there is no other. Now if he did that and got defeated by Satan, I'm, I got a problem. I got a problem with the Bible. Of course he didn't. <clears throat> it was just without form and void. And then the next stages, up to the fourth and fifth and sixth days, we have created animals and plants and finally man. Well, including sea-dwelling monster-sized creatures on day five and dinosaurs on day six. Creatures, tanum, serpents, dragons, sea monsters, not limited to whales. Everybody said, well, no, it's whales because we only see whales. But today we see stuff, but it's, some of the stuff is not there today. It refers to sea-dwelling dinosaur-type creatures. See Job 7.12. Take a look at that. See that other people don't even bother to look at this. Job 7.12. What a great resource I hear. I can just, at a moment's notice. Okay, let's take a look and see what it says. All right, hurry up, hurry up. All kinds of construction noise coming up. Job. All right, let's go to Job 7.12. Job 7.12. It's in the Old Testament, right? Let's make this bigger. Job 7.12. Am I the sea or the sea monster that you set a guard over me? Let's see what Ezekiel 32, 2 and 3. It won't cooperate. Sometimes it does this. Thirty-two. Two and three. Son of man, take up a lamentation over Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and say to him, You have compared yourself to a young line of nations. You are like the monster of the seas, in the seas, and you burst forth in your rivers, and muddied the waters in your feet, and fouled the rivers. Thus says the Lord God, and now I will spread my net over you with the company of many peoples, and they shall okay. Isaiah twenty seven one. This thing is in that day the Lord will punish Leviathan, the fleeing serpent, with his fierce and great and mighty sword, even Leviathan, the twisted serpent, and he will kill a dragon who lives in the sea. So you have a number of references to this. It's not just one little place. Uh, and there's another place I, I could see. Well, let, you know, let's take a look at that. I'm going to take a look at my website. 
and look under the word dinosaurs. Go to index, dinosaurs. I remember, you know, when you find this stuff, then you put it in a place where you can find it later on. I remember that, and you add to it. That's what I've been doing over all these years. I get more information about the same subject, and I, I put it in the same place so I can find it all at once. Now i got a lot of stuff to look at, though. All right. There's some dinosaur tracks. Take a look at those. And the Paluxy River. Glen, there it is. Glen, and Glen Falls, Glen, Glen Rose, Texas. The, called the Burdick Track. Well, there's a lot to read here. Didn't know I wrote so much about the fossils of dinosaurs that are contemporary with man, with the footprints of man. Let's see, I bet I can find that. There's the photos. Dinosaur and human footprints together. Take a look at this. This is still here online. There's the Taylor Trail, the Fall Trail, Riles Trail, Morris Track. Here it is. There's a human footprint that was actually I saw that and it was cut down the middle so to look at the toes to see if it was really a fake print or not. Here's the Tur Turnage Patton Trail. Click here to view. These are the, see these dinosaur prints, <clears throat> pretty big. They're three-pronged, the three-toed, and inside each one of them, a number of times, quite a number of times, there's a human footprint along the lake bed right here, along the side of the, that's fossilized rock. So there's fossils inside. And you pick out a couple of the, uh, here it is. See, this is the dinosaur footprints huge and we have the man's footprint right in the middle right there Let's see if we can get another, a better picture I saw them in the museum there's the, the three prong and inside there there are human footprints so they were just climbing in through the mud and uh, they probably had a step in between there's a human footprint right there uh, and uh, so there's another fo human footprint get a chance to take a look at that this is online it's not my website and I remember seeing that one that he cut off and they put it in the museum and they they took microscope scopic uh, viewpoints of the they said well the toes were carved out and it couldn't have been because it was so complex there's no capability of making it that complex when your foot goes into mud and the mud squish, squishes out between your toes all that intricate little work is still there it's not like it's carved in any case including sea mount Dwelling monster sized creatures on day five and dinosaurs on day six. Lament, uh, Lamentations 4 3. Even dragons have drawn out the beast. They have suckled their young ones. The daughter of my people has become cruel like the ostriches in the wilderness. So Job 40, here it is, 15 to 24, refers to dinosaurs created on day six. Look now at the behemoth which I made along with you. He eats grass like an ox. And now. His strength is in his lips, in his hips, and his power is in his stomach muscles. He moves his tail like a cedar, the size of a tree. The sinews of his thighs are tightly knit. His bones are like beams of bronze. Beams! His ribs are like bars of iron. He is the first of the ways of God. Only he who made